So, but we're glad that you're, you're here this morning. We're actually going to have an abbreviated service because we know it is snowing and getting worse out there. It, it was supposed to, who said praise, <laughs> it said praise the Lord. <laughs> but uh, I, I do have it under good authority. It's not, the roads are still not, it's not sticking to the roads yet because they're still warm. So, uh, so just be real careful getting to your car and yeah. out of your car. <laughs> yeah. um, and so, uh, but let's, let's go, uh, there are uh, welcome cards there, and if you have prayer requests, or if you're a guest, if you'll fill that welcome card and drop it in the offertory plate, uh, I pray every week for those, um, and if, uh, for a member or just a, an attender, so please do that, drop those in there, um, and then uh, praise the Lord that the heater is working. And, uh, and we do thank the Lord for things. Sometimes we forget what we're so blessed uh, until your heater in your car doesn't work. And then you realize as you're scraping the ice off the inside windshield uh, how, how important those things are. So, but let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer. Would you stand with me as I, as I open us in prayer? Heavenly Father, I, I thank you. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you, God, that we are warm and dry and safe here. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would uh, bless this worship service. We ask, God, that, that you would come in a special way. We love you, Lord, and we, we are here to honor you and to worship you. Bless us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Our scripture reading uh, comes from Matthew 6. If you've been uh, reading the New Testament through with us in a year, you've uh, read this. Uh, as we continue just our little kind of mini-series on prayer uh, this morning, uh, we're looking at Matthew chapter 6, and probably what is the most well-known prayer uh, that we call the Lord's Prayer. Um, but in verse 7, it says, Jesus telling the dis uh, disciples how to pray, When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Please say it with me if you want. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. And I realized that I throw an extra now in there, and my kids have pointed that out. And I said, well, the King James doesn't have that now, but uh, the Roman Catholic Church does. And guess where I learned that prayer? So David may be the only other guy that says it right, uh, like I do. But uh, uh, if, uh, isn't it good to know that uh, every denomination, now some will say debts and some say trespasses, but it means exactly the same, right? And it, it, it's good to know that when Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said you can pray like this. And I really like that he says, don't think you're going to be heard because of your many words. Uh, it, you don't have to be flowery in your prayers. And so um, let's just put that into practice right now. I want to invite you to join me kneeling if you have time, or have space rather, not time, but space in your pew. Father, thank you that Hebrews tells us that we can come boldly before your throne in Hebrews 11. Thank you, Lord, that we come. Uh, Lord, thank you that you are powerful and awesome and mighty. And Lord, that you know us personally and love us individually. Thank you. Thank you, O oh Lord. We ask, God, that you would bless uh, not just our worship service and, and what we offer you. We ask that you would take the offerings that we give even now as, as we're preparing that. Lord, Take it and build your kingdom here in Wills Point uh, and around the world. Lord, uh, thank you that we were able to gather today safely. Please bless those who cannot be here, Lord, uh, due to the weather. But, Lord, we offer the remaining uh, of this worship service for your glory and in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Um, you should have gotten uh, a handout with some blanks uh, there, and if you didn't get one, if you will uh, just kind of raise your hand and wave, we'll be happy to, to get you one. Um, it will not be on the screen. I've uh, cut it uh, way back, 
due to the weather, and we're going to have, because we're having a shortened service, and uh, the title is Prayer Recipe, and uh, I hope that after this that you won't be praying for snow next Sunday as well, because I told you it'll be a shorter service and a shorter sermon, but you know, you can pray for what you want, so... uh, but we're, we're looking, there's various scriptures, and I've given you, uh, listed those there for you in the outline. Um, but I'm calling this sermon Prayer Recipe because prayer is individual, but there are certain elements to it, like any recipe. Uh, and, you know, uh, some folks can cook really well and some can't. Um, I don't cook well. Uh, I've tried to take over some cooking things since my wife drives to Dallas several days a week and she strangely doesn't want to get home after fighting the traffic at 6 o'clock and whip me up something good to eat. Um, she is homesick today, and if I want her to know I made that comment, I'll carry it to her. You don't have to, okay? So I don't use her as sermon illustrations when she's here, but it's just too, too rich when she's not. So, uh, but, but here's the thing. I cook, and then she tells me that it's not any good which I can't argue with her. It really isn't that good. I can pretty much make hamburgers or grilled chicken on the grill, but beyond that, you know, and for some reason she wants vegetables and all these things with her food. I just think as long as we have meat, that should count as a meal. I thought I'd get an amen from one of the guys out there, but, but you know, she wants things like salad and crazy things. But uh, so when you pray, each person puts into prayer something a little bit different of themselves, but there's certain elements that that prayer should have in it. Uh, And and this is just an outline uh, that that I learned years ago. This is not original with me, uh, and I don't even know who to give credit for. Uh, Phil had heard it uh, a long time ago as well. I heard this while in college, which was in the, uh, the late 80s, so I have no idea. It could, this could have been come up with in the 1880s. My 80s or the 1980s before anybody implies differently. Uh, but I do want you to see how can you be an effective prayer? Because sometimes we pray and we say, well, I, I just don't feel like my prayers have gotten past the ceiling. Or is it doing any good? Or do, does it make, why do we even pray? If God already knows, why do we even pray? Well, Remember, prayer is about a relationship between you and God, and, uh, and part of it is a conversation, but it's more than just a conversation. Uh, it's, it's, it's a deepening of your relationship with the Lord. And so uh, look with me at that first blank there where it said you have the letter A, uh, and A is for a door, a door. And uh, you see Psalms 86 Verse 9 there, all the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. So if you look in a dictionary, synonyms for adore are worship, adoration, uh, things like that. We we think, we don't usually use the term uh, adore or adoration. Uh, a lot, except for maybe the song we sing at Christmas, O Come Let Us. Adore. Now, O Come Let Us what? Adore. Yeah. So what are those, what are those shepherds, and those, what are they doing when they're adoring Jesus? They're not pinching his cheek and saying, aren't you just an adorable, you little cute baby? No, they're worshiping him, right? They're giving homage. The, the, it, the, the uh, uh, Nativity scene is obviously not here now because uh, it's after Christmas, and I appreciate everybody who helped pick that up and, and, and got it put away. But, you know, some of those you'll see some of the, the shepherds on their knees or some of the wise men, they'll be on their knees. Why? Well, it's an act of worship. So when you go to pray, you need to remember who you're praying to. Who are you praying to? You're praying to Almighty God, the one who spoke the world into existence. The, the one who numbers your days. He knows your beginning and your end, the Bible says. In fact, not only that, he's numbered the whole days of all this world. He knows the beginning and the end of the world. And he is worthy of being worshipped. And you were created. Now, here's an interesting thing. You need to write this down. You were created to worship Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why were you created? To give him praise and worship and homage. 
and we will do it in eternity. Part of being in heaven will be uh, able to, to worship and praise the Lord. You hear people talk about the heavenly choir, and because it's heaven, I'm assuming with a glorified body, I'll have a good voice, right? Because it, it's not happening right now, right? But I, I like to sing to the Lord. I just have to do it in private a lot So uh, because he's the only one that wants to listen to it, right? So I don't know why I'm looking at Phil over there. It feels like, what am I supposed to say? But, but what I'm saying is that in heaven, what we will do, part of what we will do, not all, but part of what we'll do is worship the Lord in his presence, and you are created for it. So if you've ever done something that you're good at and you're like, man, this feels so good that I'm, I'm, I'm actually good at something. I don't know if it's running or maybe it's an athletic event or, or maybe it's uh, you, you uh, got really good grades in math because you just were like, man, math just makes sense. I get this or, or it's re- whatever it is. But you've had something you're like, man, this just clicked. I was good at it. That, that kind of that feeling... Y'all are all looking at me like, no, I've never felt like I've been good at anything. But do you know what I'm talking about? Some of you in some area? Maybe? Yeah? Okay, thanks. Yeah, I really want you to answer when I'm, yeah, not in head help. Okay, so multiply that times a thousand. And when you're in the presence of God, it's what you were made for. To worship and adore him. So in your prayer time, when you go to pray, begin with, Lord, thank you that you are, that I can come to you and that you're the mighty God. You're you are who you say you are. Thank you, God, that you are worthy to be worshipped. I just, I just worship you, and I lift you up. There's no God like you. I worship you, God. I give you praise. So when, when I pray uh, in my private prayer time or when uh, Carla and I pray, we, we, I tend to follow this model. Sometimes if you've prayed with me, you may not even realize this, but, but a lot of times I'll go through this just in my mind. I want to, who am I praying to? Well, I'm praying to Almighty God. And I'm, I'm worshiping him. Next thing, uh, to make your prayer life successful and powerful, how can you make your prayers powerful? The next thing to throw in this recipe is confession. Confession. Confess. You can just put confess. C-O-N-F-E-S-S. 1 John chapter 1 says this in verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins And to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. Now, that's good to know. It goes on to say in verse 10, if we we say that, that, that we haven't sinned, that we lie and the truth isn't in us. Because every one of us stumbles and sins. In this life, that your flesh, your humanity, at some point is going to show. My my wife would say, uh, you know, somebody's going to show their rear end. They're going to they're gonna be, and that's about as close to cussing as Carla gets is saying that. They're just showing their rear end. And, and, uh, and what she means is that sometimes we just act in the flesh, right? So how do we take care of that? Well, if you're going to go before Almighty God, you just want to make sure that, you're, that, that you're, you're clean and you're right with Him. You're in a right relationship with Him. We do that every time we have Lord's Supper. I give you time to pray and ask God. But confession, you've heard this, confession is good for the... Yeah, and that is true. That's not in the Bible, but it, it is true, right? When Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, he, he said that uh, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who what? Sin against us, right? So forgiving our sins is saying, Lord, I've, I've sinned. You're, I need your forgiveness. And what that does is as we confess our sins, it makes us aware of, you know what? I could be. I can sometimes be hard on people because their sins are different. They're, where they struggle is different than mine, and I tend to judge those sins that that don't bother me a little harsher because I'm a little superior in that area. Right now, when I say me, I'm not saying me particularly. I'm saying we tend to do that. Right. What confession does is it reminds us who we are, who we're worshiping by by adoring Him, and then by confessing how we belong to him, and that it is through his, the relationship with him that we are righteous, that we can come boldly into that phone room, as it says in Hebrews uh, uh, 14. So confess, adore, confess, and then T is for thanks. Thanks or thanksgiving. You can see that there in Psalms uh, 100 and verse 4. Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Or give thanks to him, bless his name. I learned that in the uh, New American Standard. Give thanks to the Lord, bless his name. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15 in the New Testament says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. What do you have to be thankful for? Why should you thank God? Well, let me tell you why. Once you've, once you've said, okay, God, you're the one I'm praying to, the mighty God, I'm, I worship you, my Savior, the one who died for me, the one who spoke the world into existence. Once you've done that, and, and once you've confessed, Lord, I know that I'm not worthy, but I thank you that you have forgiven me my sins. And Lord, if there's anything in my life you don't like, please fix it, Lord. I give it over to you. I want, I want to love you more than I love my sin or my flesh. Once you've done that, and then, then think of how God has blessed you in the past. What are some things you could be thankful for? If I were just to, to point out different people and say, okay, quick, tell me something you're thankful for, big or little. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, God healed me from uh, being blind or something. But Phil, what is one thing you're thankful for today? Thankful for his wife. That's always a good thing to say. Amen, men, right? Okay, now somebody else, but you can't use what Phil used. Uh, somebody, what's one thing you're thankful for today? What? That you can walk? Amen. That's right. Until we, when we, when we, until we can't do things, we we take things for granted, don't we? Anything else you're thankful for? A warm house. Amen to that. Especially tonight when it's going to get down to whatever negative or whatever, 18 degrees. So I'm thankful that uh, that you guys are here. I'm I'm thankful that you're here to to worship this morning, and and I'm thankful that the Lord is here in a special way because he promises that we're two or three more gathered, that he's there with them. And so we've been, and, and he also says, uh, in, he says he inhabits the praise of his people. Amen. So as we're worshiping together, God's presence here in a, in a special way. But what, why be thankful? Because uh, several places in the scripture, Philippians talks about give thanks in all things or in all circumstances, give thanks. Now, not for all circumstances, but in those circumstances, give thanks. Why? Because what thankfulness does is it resets your mind. It recalibrates. When you start naming what God has done, Lord, I am thankful. So uh, I'm thankful that when I had a car wreck that I wasn't hurt and that the the person that I I, uh, sideswiped wasn't hurt. I'm thankful that nobody was physically had to go to the hospital or anything like that. Uh, th- and, but you begin to see, and, and where has God protected you in the past? Or wh- what are things, Lord, I'm thankful that you've done this. And then big things, but also little things. Because in the Lord's Prayer, he says, uh, give us this day our daily. Yeah. I'm thankful for the, the meal that I'll eat at lunchtime. That'll hopefully be a hot meal, right? Um, because I'll microwave some leftover pizza and it'll be hot. No, because I'm, but I'm, I'm thankful for the, in other words, it begins to make me focus not on, see what happens is if you focus only on what you're lacking or what is negative, that becomes the whole soul focus of us and, and it begins to dominate our thinking. Let me give you an example. When I was a kid, I had a 10-speed bike. I remember when I, I graduated from the bike with the, you know, the banana seat and the and the, some of you don't know how cool a banana seat bike was. But the older ones, they know, right? And so uh, and you might even put playing cards in the back tires, so, you know, do that kind of thing. But so, you know, and you might jump it. And, and so, but then I got a big boy bike because it was a 10 speed, right? And so the trouble is it had a real skinny tire. 10 speed bikes have thinner tires than just a, a street bike, right? By street bike, I don't mean motorcycle, I mean banana seat bike. So, so I was so proud. But in where our house was, the sidewalk uh, and the curb were together. In other words, you had the curb and then the sidewalk and then your yard. But wh- where that was, there was a kind of a, a crack where the, the two went together. And it was probably, I don't know, it was just big enough for a 10-speed bicycle tire is what it was. And I can remember looking at it thinking, I, I do not want to go into that because if I do, something bad's going to happen. And you know what? I, as I was riding down the sidewalk, I looked and I was looking to make sure I didn't go into that crack. And guess where I went? I was completely focused on not going there. So guess where I went? Boom, right into it and then right over the handlebars and right onto the concrete. Luckily, the concrete was not hurt. So here's the thing. What I'm saying is when we focus on just the, what we say, we're the, just that negative, then it begins to dominate and and. 
and somehow it controls us and rules us. What Thanksgiving does, it says, thank the Lord that I, what I should have been doing is look at this wide sidewalk. All I have to do is stay on this three, three and a half foot wide place here. Look, look at all. Thank you, Lord, for this great sidewalk, right? If I had done that, I wouldn't have gone over into the crack and, and uh, you know, hit my head and ended up being a Baptist preacher. So, what I'm saying, why, why are we thankful? Why should we acknowledge God? Because, because He's the one true God and He is powerful and He's different than any of That's who you're worshiping and that's who you're praying to, someone who can do something. And why should you confess your sins? Because you want to be right with Him so He'll hear you. And why should we be thankful? I'll tell you why, because it resets your mind. It resets your mind and no matter whether it's a health problem or a finance problem or a time problem or whatever, whatever begins to weigh on you that's bigger than you, it, that, 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 that takes up your time, you begin to focus on it because you have to. But friends, what Thanksgiving does is it makes us widen our focus and realize, God, you're bigger than my problem, and I don't have to go into that crack. That's why we're thankful. Lastly, supplication. Now, I know that's not a word we use a lot. Supplicate, S-U-P-P-L-I-C-A-T-E. S-U-P-P-L-I-C-A-T-E. C-A-T-E, which is a fancy way of saying pray. And it's the kind of prayer we mostly think of. Supplication is asking for something. So Acts. Now, I, it, it's just an acronym like the book of Acts. Adore, confess, thanks, and then supplication. And, and look at the scriptures that I've given you there. Psalm 21, verses 1 and 2. O oh Lord, in your strength the king rejoices, and in your salvation how greatly he exults. You have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. Selah. Now, what the psalmist is saying there is that God prayed, that David, King David prayed to you, and Lord, you heard him and you blessed him and you answered his prayers. You gave him the desire of his heart. That's a blessing, that God gives you the desire of your heart. Now, what happens is, first, what you have to do is make sure your heart's right. And when you confess and you thank, then your heart begins to desire the things that God wants. And so when God gives you your heart's desire, it's actually what God desires. Think about that. The king rejoices because God gave him what his heart desired, and his heart desired what God wanted Look at it a little different. Look at the New Testament verse I gave you, 1 John chapter 5, beginning in verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have towards Him, meaning God, that if we ask anything according to God's will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked of Him. Now, that's a, a long sentence there, but it, it, what it's saying is if we know that God hears us, then when he hears us, he's going to answer because he's promised to answer our prayers. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked of him. But here's the confidence that we have towards him. If we ask anything according to his what? Will. Yeah, you can underline will there. See, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, as you walk with the Lord and as you pray and as you spend time with the Lord and as you renew your mind in his word, you begin to, to think the things of Christ, and you begin to desire the things that the Lord desires. And so when you pray, you ask the Lord for his will to be done. Just as Jesus, when I talked about it last night, I talked about Jesus in the garden. He says, Lord, I don't want this cup. If you can take this cup away, but not my will, but yours be done, right? And I call that the prayer that never fails. Lord, not my will, but what? Yours be done. So, God sees all the, the picture. He understands everything we don't. And, and when you make those supplications, you can go to him and say, God, I know that you are powerful. I know that you will answer prayers. God, thank you for the prayers that you've answered in the past. Lord, thank you for that. But Lord, I ask that you would, and maybe it's to heal someone. Maybe, maybe it's to find a job for someone. Maybe it's to comfort someone who's, who's lost someone. Maybe, maybe there's... Uh, Maybe there's a need for salvation in maybe even your own family and you're praying for someone to be saved. Uh, whatever that, that need is, when you go to the Lord, Lord, please, please save 
uh, and that name that person. Uh, Lord, I'm, I'm asking you to do that. Or, Lord, uh, please give favor to, uh, to so-and-so and, and heal their body, God. Or, Lord, you know that so-and-so's been looking for a job, and, and please give uh, her a job. Whatever that prayer request is, that's what we typically think of as praying, asking God for something, right? But, but when it comes, after you've gone through it, adoring the Lord and confessing to Him your sins and, and thanking Him for how He's answered prayers in the past and all the, the things that He's done, then when you come and supplicate, you realize, you know what? God can take this. He can do all these things. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. I'm, I'm, and you can take it off your hook and you can put it on His and say, God, you got this. Jesus said it a little bit differently, um, obviously a lot better than I did because it's Jesus, but he said, if anyone is weak and heavy laden, come to me and I'll give him rest. Uh, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. Lay your yoke down and take my yoke upon you for my burden is light. Hmm. Sometimes I'm carrying too heavy a burden because I haven't taken it to the Lord and laid it down before him and taken his, or sometimes I go back and try to pick up the burden that I've already laid down. What, what Acts does is it makes me realize adoring the Lord, confessing to the Lord, thanking the Lord for what he's done, and bringing my prayer requests before the Lord, my supplications, knowing that he can handle it. And when you do that, and sometimes you'll focus more on the confession, or sometimes you'll focus more on the adoration, or sometimes you'll have more in the thanksgiving, or sometimes there'll be more in the supplication. That recipe can change, but you're gonna, you should have all those elements in there, but some it may have some more of this or less of that or a pinch of that or just a dab of this. But all of that should be in any prayer in the sense that that is the prayer that the Lord hears when we adore, confess, thank, and supplicate. Isn't it good to know that God hears your prayers? Praise be to God. Amen? Of all the people in the world, when you talk to God, He hears you. Some 8 billion people, 9, I can't remember how many there are. I keep losing track. I've been counting on my fingers, but once I get to about 2 billion, I stop. What I'm saying is, of all those people in the world, God hears you specifically. He knows your name. He knows who you are. The Bible says in, uh, in he numbers even the hairs on our head. He knows us so intimately. So you can go to him and you can talk to him. And he will hear you and God will answer. Sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's wait or maybe. Sometimes it's just quiet. And those are hard, isn't it? But he hears you. Keep going and keep talking. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that your word tells us that we can come before you. We can come into your presence. How awesome that is, Lord. You who, who created each one of the people here in this room. Lord, you mapped their DNA. You knew what color eyes they'd have. You, you knew how tall they'd be. You knew what they would like and dislike. Lord, you, you made them in your image to be able to love and to care for others. Thank you, God, for them. Thank you, Lord. Help us, God. Help us to, to be able to pray effectively and to make a difference in the life, Lord, first in our own life and our relationship with you and then in those that we love. Help us to be prayer warriors for them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. And I want you to, uh, to know that if you don't know Christ as Savior, this is a great time to meet him. You come as we sing. We're, we're only going to sing a few verses. So if God's been speaking to your heart, you come. You come as we sing. Amen. Let's be dismissed with a blessing. Father, thank you. Thank you that you love each one of these. Thank you, God, that you know each one. Lord, Thank you that we can come and speak to the ruler of the universe with our requests. Thank you, O oh God. We bless you. We praise you. We, we glorify you, Lord. Surely, God, there is no Savior but Jesus. Lord, you alone can save us, and we give you thanks and praise. Lord, bless your people. I ask, God, that you get them home safely. Lord, just put your angels with them as they drive home now. Put, put your angels with them and put them around those cars and get them home safely. And Lord, we ask for those that aren't here, Lord, as well. 
that you just keep everyone safe on these, on these roads. Lord, I ask this blessing in the name of Christ. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You're dismissed.